So, you want to become the best Arknights player, huh? Well, it's gonna be a lot tougher than you think. First of all, you're gonna have to- What do you mean I'm not qualified to give tips on how to become the best Arknights player? Seriously? You're calling me garbage? I mean, sure, it took me two months to clear 5-3 CM, but like, come on, that's the game's fault. You know what? Be quiet, Amiya. I'm trying to flex on the beginner players here. From all the previous tower defense games I've played, they've been relatively easy. You start off with some towers, earn money from killing enemies on the map, and slowly upgrade and buy better towers. This process usually streamlines into a strategy of saving up enough money until you can spam some high DPS tower that pretty much won you the game. Sure, the strategy might be slightly altered from game to game, but at its core, it still remained basically the same. When I first played Arknights, the complexity of all the game mechanics spun this mindset on its head. No longer was the strategy just AFK until you win. I actually had to think about my decisions because Arknights can be extremely unforgiving when it comes to mistakes. Because of how difficult the game can be, some people may resort to giving up and following step-by-step -step guides in order to beat specific stages. As a veteran of this game, I understand what it's like to struggle when you're throwing all your ideas at the stage, but none of them work. In this video, I'll explain some key concepts that players tend to overlook, and hopefully, whether it's in the future or right now, you'll be able to use these ideas to complete stages you might be having a hard time on. Yeah, it's the Emperor, Let's start out with an overused phrase. Know your enemy and yourself, Sun Tzu if he spoke English and played Dark Knights. The power of information, I would argue, is the most important factor in being a good Dark Knights player. Know what your operators and skills you're using. Know what they specialize in and what niches they have. Know where the enemy spawns are and what enemy types there are. Know which enemies come from which spawn and their pathing. Know the spawn times of important enemies. Simply knowing most of these things can practically win you a stage. Missing information can heavily impact your strategizing, which can lead you to mistiming your placements or skills. Here's two fun concepts for new players, pressure and splitting the map. These two ideas are exactly what they sound like. Splitting the map is basically sectioning the map so that you can deal with enemies as separate problems instead of dealing with all of them as a combined problem. This strategy isn't always applicable since enemy pathing and types can mess it up, but sometimes it can be used to break down a big problem into simpler ones with easier solutions. Pressure is the amount of intensity in a specific section of the map. For example, if you were dealing with Frost Nova on the top of the map, you would say that that section has high pressure. Pressure basically indicates which parts of the map you should pay close attention to. High pressure areas means you should really be focusing on those specific parts of the map. In 616, Frost Nova comes from the top lane and makes her way down each lane. The mid lane mainly spawns Ice Slugs and Frost Clearers that can practically one-shot Frozen Operators, while the bottom lane spawns Defender Leaders and Ice Mages. In this situation, you should pay very close attention to the middle and top lane, since those are the main threats of the map. The bottom lane can basically be neglected if you have some arts damage and a healer defender, saving your brain power for the main problems. This application of pressure and map splitting definitely makes the stage a lot easier to handle compared to trying to throw squads at the wall. Can I teach this next segment? Aw oh, Mia, I've been playing this game for more than a year now. I definitely know what I'm talking about. What the hell is a degree in Amiya Pog, and why do I need one to explain game mechanics? I don't have a small brain! I am the one, I'm here. If you strip away all the fancy effects and skills, tower defense games are just plain number games at their core. Enemies have a certain amount of health, and you need to meet this certain DPS requirement in order to kill the enemy before they get to the exit. Now, if I asked you, what is DPS, your response would probably be, damage per second. While everyone understands the main concept of high DPS means more damage, I want to address some nuances I think most people haven't realized. DPS is a form of measurement in terms of a second, but what if we changed our form of measuring the damage? Let's compare which requirement is easier to fill. Would you rather do a stage that requires 100 damage per second or a stage that requires 100 damage per minute? The obvious answer is a stage that requires 100 damage per minute to complete since it does not need as much DPS as the other option. In this situation, we kept the amount of damage we needed to do the same. We still need to do 100 damage, but one stage needs it in a second, while the other one needs the damage done in a minute. This is the basis behind stall strategies. Every CC since Blade has had some form of stalling, and by extending the amount of time required to kill the enemy, you technically reduce the DPS requirements for the stage. I understand not everyone watching this video is a mega whale with a highly built specialist team for stalling, but simply blocking enemies also has the same effect. They are stopped in place, extending the time frame for your damage, essentially lowering the DPS requirements. Arknights is the first game that actually got me to think about the core definition of DPS, and I'm sure you can use this knowledge to at least understand DPS a little better. 
Even though this topic doesn't really fit in with the video, I still want to do a little rant here about my opinions on guides. By guides, I mean the ones where you follow placements and skill timing step by step. Guide usage can vary from player to player, but I think once you get past a certain point, there's no real fun in the game unless you play the game for yourself. Following guides doesn't allow for playstyle or strategy experimentation. I completely understand there are valid reasons why you may want to use these guides. Maybe you've been stuck on a stage for a long while and you just want to get it over with or you just want to complete your annihilation for the first time without any surprise enemy leaks. But to the people with well-built accounts, you should be using your own brain, not copying someone else's homework. I'm not saying to abstain from these guides like they're the next Antichrist, but at some point I think every player should forge their own path, which is why I made my guide videos. My videos give you the information you need in order to beat the stage, but they're not a direct answer to the question. I try suggesting operators that people can use, or borrow if you're poor, to clear specific problems in the stage. But at the end of the day, you should find what works best for you. The beauty in Ark Knights is coming up with your own strategy and taking pride in it. I got your stupid degree. Now can I teach? It's already the end of the video? God damn it, I knew you were baiting me. Beginner's advice. Play the game. Just play it. I could talk more about concepts and strategies and operators, but at the end of the day, you don't get much better at the game just by listening to me rant for another 7-8 to eight minutes. If you need any help, there are tons of wonderful Arknights communities out there, but just remember to take each piece of advice with a grain of salt. Honestly, the game isn't too difficult, so don't be afraid to build or pull for who you want.